Humanity has never faced this kind of extinction level before. You even jump in the water and you can actually smell the death. And yet we're not taking the necessary measures to protect them from the threats that we ourselves are creating. This view of the Florida case is so beautiful that you might find it hard to believe that there's a crisis going on underwater. What you're looking at looks like uh, an apocalypse, so to speak. But that only really becomes clear when you see what it used to look like. This was Carrie's Fort Reef in 1975. This is what it looked like 40 years later. And this is it today. What used to be living coral is now skeleton. What you would imagine what would happen on land during apocalypse, this is what's happening under the sea. And it's happening around the world. Warmer temperatures are killing coral at a rapid pace. It's like going down there and watching someone you love who's very sick. Imagine going to visit an old friend and you're just watching them slowly, slowly doing their way, but everyone else around you doesn't even understand what's happening or, you know, doesn't feel like it affects them. Again, my name is Mason, that's Captain Travis. Mason Bodner works for a boat company that takes divers to see the coral reefs. And it's very hard working in this industry, trying to explain to people, hey, it still is beautiful and you still need to come out here and see it, but you also need to understand what we've done to it um, and what we continue to do to it. What we've done to it ranges from polluting the ocean with sewage water to what is the biggest threat today, climate change. The ocean absorbs 90% of the excess heat in the atmosphere, and corals can't survive in excessively warm waters. First, their flesh turns white, and then it falls off as they die. I mean, imagine um, trees turning white en masse. Everyone will be noticing and everyone will be wanting action. But because it's happening underwater, it goes on and, and no one really cares. Richard Weaver starred in the Netflix documentary Chasing Coral. Corals are these amazing animals that have been around for half a billion years that grow these structures that become these underwater cities. He has been diving since he was 16 and has witnessed the massive die-off of corals. You do um, fall in love with these environments and then you go back and revisit them and the life is gone. Um, you even jump in the water and you can actually smell the death. But whether we see them die or not, scientists say we will all feel the effects if corals go extinct. For the first time in human history, we're on the verge of losing an entire ecosystem on which we depend. Coral reefs provide us medicine for diseases like cancer. The fish they support are the main source of protein for a billion people around the world. And for those of us who live close to the coast, they lessen the effects of hurricanes. That's our first line of protection from storm surge. Without the reefs, we are so much more vulnerable. Our businesses are more vulnerable. Our lives are more vulnerable to damage from storm surges during hurricanes. The bad news is we've already lost about half of all corals in the world. The good news is that there are people trying to save them. The Coral Restoration Foundation is returning live corals to the ocean. They grow them in the water, harvest them, and then literally glue them onto the reefs where they once grew naturally. Restoration of these ecosystems is absolutely essential before they become extinct forever. I watched as curious fish were attracted by the new corals. It seemed like a small promise of what it could look like again. No, we will never be able to get back to where we were 100 years ago, but we definitely can get back to a point where these reefs are diverse ecosystems and where they're performing their natural function in the world. Experts say the corals will reproduce and populate into reefs again. They've already seen it happen. But for every step forward, there are many more backwards. On their biggest planting day, volunteers return 1,700 corals to the ocean. Compare that to the half a million corals that marine biologists say were killed as a result of dredging Port Miami. How much is that? Half a million? Uh, it's a lot. Uh, <laughs> if we had done a coral restoration operation that had restored 500,000, half a million corals, that would be something we'd be immensely proud of. And here's a situation where we just lost a half a million corals uh, because of something that really we should have not allowed to happen the way it happened. 
In 2016, the Army Corps of Engineers took sediment out of the seafloor of the coast of Miami. They did it to make the port deeper so bigger ships could dock there. But some of the sediments smothered the corals and killed them. Now they're considering dredging the port again. Here we are only three years after just spending all this money and, and doing all this dredging operation and killing all of our corals. And now apparently we need to redredge the port channel because it wasn't done quite wide enough the first time. And I, I think that's, that's really disappointing to me as a marine biologist um, because couldn't we have done this correctly the first time around? The Army Corps of Engineers says the 2016 dredging taught them a lot, so they don't make the same mistakes if they expand again. They've agreed to pay to replant 10,000 corals for the damage they caused. But experts say restoring is not enough. We need to start by protecting the coral reefs we still have, or we will lose them beyond the point of no return. Humanity has never faced this kind of extinction level before. It would be like losing all of the world's forests. We don't know what the implications of that could be, not only for life in the ocean, but for all life on this planet.